Mr. Speaker, with your leave, I rise to respond to the question posed by the Honourable Member for St. Christopher VI. And I'll answer it this way, Mr. Speaker. From the inception, the government rolled out an effective education program on COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, the task force would have gotten into action very early and began a series of consultations with various groups and organizations educating the general public about COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, we've also had the weekly NEOC briefings which were used as an educational tool as well. And week after week, Mr. Speaker, the task force would have spoken to the non-pharmaceutical measures of your hand sanitizing, your face masks, and social distances. And they kept the public informed of the importance of keeping these measures in place until we were able to see the light in terms of a vaccine. And I must say that the successes that we have had thus far as it relates to COVID-19 were due in part to the education as well as persons following the measures outlined in the educational programs and they continue to follow those as well. Now, Mr. Speaker, we have begun the rollout of our vaccine. And at this point, the country already knows that the vaccine of choice for St. Kitts and Nevis is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. We are in about our fourth week of rollout and as of yesterday, 17th March, we would have vaccinated 7,071 persons with their first dose of that Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. We were able to do so thanks to the contributions made by Dominica and India in the amounts of 2,000 and 20,000 doses respectively. And I am pleased to say, Mr. Speaker, that through the COVAX facility, we will be able to receive another 21,600 doses, enough to cover another 20% of our population. These doses, the facility have indicated, will be received in three tranches over the next three months, starting this month, Mr. Speaker. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, vaccination is taking place every day, Monday through Friday, from one till five, at all of our health centers on St. Kitts, as well as all of the health centers on Nevis. We have also began vaccination rollouts on Saturdays in St. Kitts, it's the new town, and the Bastia Health Centers from nine until one. And in Nevis, it's the Charlestown and Gingerland Health Centers. Since we've begun the rollout of the vaccine, we have stepped up in our communication and education as it relates to the vaccine. As such, Mr. Speaker, a comprehensive communication strategy has been implemented by the Ministry of Health to support this COVID-19 vaccine program. Since about February, this education process had begun. Mr. Speaker, clear and transparent communication on all aspects of the COVID-19 vaccines, led by our subject matter experts, to build public trust in the vaccine safety and efficacy is ongoing using various modes of traditional as well as non-traditional communication. Mr. Speaker, our educational facilitators include our chief medical officer, our medical chief of staff at the Joseph and France Hospital. They are accompanied by other doctors 
within the public health system, as well as the Ministry of Health Promotion Unit, who are also assisting in this vein. The COVID-19 vaccination and communication strategy approach is built on successful communication and engagement program delivered through the COVID-19 pandemic to date. Mr. Speaker, the goal of this communication strategy is to increase the level of acceptance and build confidence in the safety and efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines by the general public. There are six main elements to our objectives guiding our strategy, and that is providing prompt, simple, and focused communication on the COVID-19 vaccine and vaccination processes, building public confidence on the safety and the efficacy of the new vaccine to reduce vaccine hesitancy, ensuring understanding and acceptance of the phased and prioritized approach to overcome concerns of vaccine eagerness in the population waiting to be vaccinated, and reducing the influence or myths or disinformation, myths, misconceptions toward the vaccines. The content of the COVID-19 vaccine communication plan is reaching a wide cross-section of the Federation, sensitizing and educating individuals, families, organizations, and communities, both on St. Kitts and Nevis. The program continues to gain its momentum with increased trust and confidence as persons are assured of its safety and effectiveness. And as, as I've said, 7,071 vaccinated with the first dose as of yesterday. Mr. Speaker, some vaccination sessions have been well publicized. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the CMO and medical chief of staff have actually been speaking to the imminent vaccine candidates for several months now on our weekly COVID briefings, long before we decided on the choice of vaccines. They were given the public information on all of the front line, front runners, such as the Pfizer BioNTech, the Moderna, and the Oxford Astra AstraZeneca. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister would have announced that St. Kitts and Nevis will roll out its vaccination program on Monday, 22nd February. And so at that point, it would have come as no surprise to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Subsequently, I made an announcement on national radio and television to inform the citizens and residents of the rollout program. And then on Monday, February 22nd, 2021, we had an extremely successful and well patronized and publicized launch of our vaccination program at the Newtown Health Center. We saw a broad cross section of persons from the community, including our frontline workers, members of cabinet, even the clergy being vaccinated that day. Mr. Speaker, there have been educational sessions on leadership matters. The NIAC task force held a COVID-19 consultation on the 23rd of February, and this included a large gathering at Ross Universities with stakeholders such as the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Rotary, Christian Council, Evangelical Association, and that was streamed live as well, Mr. Speaker. Our competent and proficient educators have engaged in sensitization sessions with employees from such organizations as ECCB, SCASPA, police, the taxi tour operators, hotels, businesses. Sessions will continue and are continuing every single day, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've also gone into the communities to bring the message out. We, I, I was joined 
by Dr. Wilkinson to engage persons within my constituency even on an educational session at Bronte Welch Primary as well as St. Johnson Community Centre. And we have also had sessions in McKnight Community Centre, St. Paul's Community Centre, and we should be having one this evening at Otley's Community Centre on Monday in Old Road Community Centre. And on top of that, Mr. Speaker, we have now evolved to the point where after these vaccination information sessions, we are also allowing persons to be vaccinated on site. So once you've had the information session, you understand what is being required, you will then be be able to be vaccinated immediately following those information sessions. And so it is ongoing, Mr. Speaker, as we try to reach our target of 70%. And I would like to continue to encourage all of our honorable members within these hallowed halls to do their part to sensitize the people with whom they come in contact with their constituents, for those of us who are parliamentary representatives, to go out and get the vaccine. As I have said, it is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which is a two-dose vaccine. We will continue to educate and sensitize the public, and we will continue to do our part to make sure we're able to do whatever it takes to be rid of the effects of COVID-19 on our population. I hope that would have answered the questions. May it please you, Mr. Speaker.